What's up, fellow travelers? Welcome to Traversing the Stars. I'm J.D. Ross, broadcasting from the Mothership. Please welcome my special guest today, actress Patrika Darbo. Patrika, welcome to the show. Thanks, J.D. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. So uh, how's everything going? How, how are you this evening? I, mean, I think we well, talked a little bit <laughs> off air, but... <laughs> oh, well, now that I've technically got myself on here and I'm sitting on my hands so I don't push a wrong button, I'm fine. <laughs> Say, so, yeah, everybody at home, you don't see the uh, the technical difficulties that sometimes happen, but they do happen. <laughs> it's uh, it happens a little more often to some of us that, uh, you know, grew up with an abacus. So <laughs> like... I don't think I've ever even seen a real abacus. So. <laughs> Let me go in the other room. I probably get <laughs> I love it. I love it. So tell everybody at home a little bit about you. Um, well, I um, I live in Burbank, California with Jealous. my husband and my dog. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm tomorrow. Let's see. What is today? Uh, Friday. I start airing again on Days nice. of Our Lives, which nice. is very exciting. Yes. Very exciting. Lots of words to memorize. Um, yeah. And I've been doing this professionally since the 80s. Before that, I was a credit manager for 20 years. Okay, okay. So which one do you prefer? I'm assuming acting. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. Stupid questions aside, right? (laughs) What I'm doing now is like, they always say that saying, if you do what you love, you're never working. So that's that's where I am right now. I totally get that. I love that. I love hearing that too. Like, I I love like when I get to talk to somebody who's like, who's really loving what they're doing. Because like, you know, not everybody gets to do that. Not everybody gets to really enjoy what they do for a living no i mean it's i'm not going to say it's easy sure um it it's hard work but um i was determined and here i am (laughs) i love it i love it so you you mentioned days of our lives um i'm going to be totally honest i've never been uh one to be into soap operas i think the closest i've ever come to being into soap operas would be like back in the 90s when I was into the uh, the WWE, like the, the wrestling stuff. This is basically <laughs> just soap opera with action. But so tell us how like you kind of got into the soap opera world. Uh, well, I was uh, invited by Fran Bascom. She was the casting director. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was coming on to serve beer and peanuts. And I ended up, uh, as Tom Logan from TV Guide called me, the f- full-figured bitch goddess of daytime. The so. full-figured bitch goddess of daytime. That's a pretty. That's a pretty awesome. Uh, that's a pretty awesome title to carry. It pretty is. I used. To, I used to tell Christian Alfonso. Um, you know, she's like a size two. I think uh-huh. she's even smaller, but I'm a size two also. She has a zero on the front of the two. I got a zero on the back <laughs> of the two. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. good. Yeah. So you watch NCIS and things like that? I've, yeah, I've definitely watched NCIS. Those are soup, soap operas, darling. I mean, That's true. Get, That's true. You get attached to your characters and you want to know what's going to happen to them. And they do little personal stories as well as who what crime is solved. So yeah, I mean, the, this is, I think, the basis of television started here. Love and it. we used to have 18 to 20 uh, soaps going on all over mm-hmm. and a lot in New York and and here. Um, and we only have four soaps left, though we oh, have wow. a lot of streaming now. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of um, digital series going on, which are soap operas. So mm-hmm. I think it's a genre <laughs> that'll stay around. At least I hope so. Yeah. Um, well, you make a good point, too. I mean, like, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, you know, like punk music, you can't really totally define it, but like, you know, you, you kind of know it when you see it, but like, I mean, you could, you could really say there's a lot of shows that aren't like traditionally soap operas that yes. are kind of soap operas. And, and Dallas, everybody was oh, yeah. on Dallas. Dallas was a big dynasty. All those shows were um, your nighttime soaps. And yeah, there are a lot, I think, uh, oh, I am so sorry. All good. I'm so sorry. Hey. I can't even hang up the phone. There we go. (laughs) Anyway, I apologize. All good. Um, All good. um, uh, Well, I was saying, Dice, a lot of the streaming shows now are Mm -hmm. there. You know, I did. um, I got an Emmy nomination from the Bay and from Studio City, which are both digital soap operas. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, it's 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 I think it's here to stay. It's just a different form of it that just keeps growing and growing. Sure. Sure. And the fans are the most loyal fans you will ever find. Oh, I believe ever. it. I believe oh, it. Ever. Um, and God bless them. I love each and every one of them. A lot of them have become friends over the 25 years that I've done days. So it's amazing. It's amazing. Love it. I do remember way back in the day, like some of my earlier memories, like when I was way wee, my mom used to, um, she was really into uh, Days of Our Lives. I, I, I specifically remember there was a character named Victor. 
I only remember that because my mom, I think my mom had a crush on him or something, or maybe she didn't like, I don't know. I was too young to really. <laughs> that's that's John Aniston and John is still with us. In fact, I've got a script over there that I've got to learn or I have to keep polishing it because yeah. um, we, we, we get tested for COVID. And if somebody's in sure. contact with somebody from COVID or um, is not feeling well, uh, we have to um you know, skip shows and go on to another show. Yeah. So, but John is still here with us as is um, uh, Bill Hayes uh, and Susan Seaforth. They're, they're sort of the matriarch and patriarch right now of the, the shows. So. Yeah. Now, is it intimidating working with them? Like, cause they've been there. I mean, I, they've been there because I, I, this is like early nineties that my mom was into that. So, I mean, they've been there for a long time. So is that intimidating really, working they, with them? They really have, you know, not really that. I mean, they're, they're warm, wonderful people. Um, nice. Their characters are not who they are. Right. Um, and they're, they're very kind, giving and wonderful actors. So it's, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to love say it. that I've worked with John Aniston or, and uh, Bill Hayes and Susan. Yeah. I love Deidre it. Hall's been there. I mean, they're all wonderful. Yeah. So what do you think uh, has like been, because you said there's only a couple soaps like that are still going like, so like, what do you think is the staying power of like days of our lives, for example, the fans? Yeah. If the, you know, the fans right into the network and that they were you better not do anything. And they yeah. are, you know, they're like an army of fierceness that comes at you and without on any show without our fans, where are we? I mean, yeah. if they're not tuning in and watching, then the network goes cancel that show. Lifeblood's so, gone. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's not like the oldest in, in the old days, the soap sort of carried networks. Yeah. I mean, the, you know, with the Proctors and Gambles and the, you know, those mm -hmm. were those times were like incredible. And also in those times, they were a lot slower. It, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you sort of repeated a lot of stuff. Yeah. And on the yeah. Friday, you summed up. So um, even when I started, we would one of the scripts would be I saw him. The other one say, I, yeah. I, he was over there. I could see him the other day, you know, so you just sort of repeated stuff that yeah. uh, tied it all together. So. Hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, it's funny you say about the fans too, because like, I, I'm, I, it's like, it brings to mind one show that it only got one season, but like I was, I, I was obsessed with it and a lot of people still are uh, Firefly it was on Fox. So it got canceled because mm -hmm. everything on Fox gets canceled, but <laughs> so I'm hoping yeah, that well, comes back it, one day. Remember it in the old days, people had 23 or had like, you know, 40, 40 shares. And that's yeah. how big the audience was. Now it's like two, three shares, two shares and stuff. So, and if you don't have a certain one going on, I mean, I think um, I have, I had a young friend uh, that, uh, was we have the same publicist and he mm -hmm. he Michael Campion he was on Fuller House mm -hmm. uh, the new one and you know after Rest they've done peace, so Saget. much and you know uh, yeah nice man all the um all the it's all subscription so when yeah. subscriptions start to go down then it's bye bye to the show the new they version think, of ratings know, it, yeah so it's they have to do things like that so it's you know it's you get attached and you're like <laughs> you know. I just wish when they decided to do that, they would sum it up. Yeah. They would give us a nice, decent closure. Right. So, but that isn't always possible. And stuff. Yeah. And I guess the suits probably don't care about that as much. So I know it's all about the money. <laughs> yeah. Money. It is a business. So I mean, it is a business level. that you got to do it that way. So <laughs> it's crazy. Um, I think the soaps are the hardest business I've ever done or show yeah. stuff I've done because there is, we shoot a movie script a day. Mm -hmm. It may be piecemeal because we're doing different shows, especially now with COVID. Right. But when regularly we would shoot a, we would shoot a movie script a day. Wow. You know, when is, if you're doing a film, you may shoot three pages a day. Yeah. If that, and, you know, that's so it's like, it's, and you get, basically you get a couple shots at doing yeah. the lines and doing them what they want, unless you really screw up. So yeah. It's uh, it's crazy. And that's and when you're doing a sitcom, the script you get on Monday is not the script you shoot on uh, Friday. And because they go through and make all the changes mm -hmm, throughout the sometimes week. Sometimes the second show is even different than the first show you take. And then they edit, re-edit stuff all together. So it's a it's a crazy business. But like I said, it's what I want to do. So I really don't work. I that's awesome. Time. That's awesome. So, yeah. So you haven't really like worked for <laughs> a couple of decades now. That's for a while awesome. there. Yeah. A couple of de <laughs> number of decades. I lost. Yeah. <laughs> so how you, we mentioned about COVID. So like what, what have been like the challenges, like, like, you know, is like getting, oops, sorry, getting um, 
like you know getting things rolling with that like so raging well, every time every day when we go in we get mm -hmm. tested yeah if we've been off the show for over over a week we have to be we get tested in the morning and we have to wait in our dressing rooms until we're cleared and mm -hmm. sometimes that's a couple hours right so otherwise we get um we just go if we've been there and they don't suspect or we don't have any symptoms and right excuse me then we just go home go in get in wardrobe hair and makeup yeah. excuse me um uh, i guess the hardest bit like i said i've got like piecemeal shows yeah uh, two two days last week i mm -hmm. went in and um unfortunately somebody tested positive that a couple of the actors that i worked with were close to Ooh. so therefore it was like patrika we're sorry we dressed you up and got you in hair and makeup and wardrobe but you need to go home because we don't have anybody for you to work with today oh, so wow. it's um you know and then those people have to go home and, and quarantine for five or so days so yeah it's you know and um and like i said we have you know susan hayes uh, mm -hmm. and bill hayes and um john aniston and they're a little older so we're very mm -hmm. protective of those kids. yeah they're protective of all of us but some of them that are a little older and need to be watched out for and they're right. very good about that yeah yeah well so they i guess they would have to kind of get creative like if they can't get the shots they need for that week i guess they would have to get creative with the storylines with that no see we're six months ahead so what they do is they just put this script over here and go to this script then we'll come back to this script that's smart we'll go over here and do this one they'll finish this one up over here and you know since we've had covid what we're going into the third year right Ugh, now, i guess i don't yeah. know i've been in prison too long <laughs> i know right <laughs> <laughs> uh, that uh, uh days of our lives has really been the one show that was current because mm -hmm. they 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 are so far ahead they didn't lose any anything they could keep showing fresh shows every single day yeah so did the bold and the if, beautiful do like kind of like didn't do as far ahead uh, as far as like filming? no they're usually they're usually like about maybe a month ahead just okay. one month at that much so yeah um and y and r and general hospital those are the mm -hmm. other three shows that are still here but they're they're not as far ahead as, as days is hmm I feel I, I feel like that's a smart move. I mean, because six months that gives you a lot of wiggle room if you really. Well, they need have it. a lot of wiggle room here with that going on. I yeah. Guess. So you know, it's a, uh, it's it's the I I think the only problem is is that the writers have to like be going like this. Because, yeah. Because uh, it's like they can't if some what the hell my hair just did <laughs> it, they can't um they can't uh they can't fix a story if it's six months ahead. I mean, the story's right. already been shot. So. Right it's it's kind of crazy and stuff like that and my storyline coming up is going to be a wild ride and i yeah yeah, yeah it is <laughs> okay okay All right now are you but, coming but back to the, the same, same character time, you played before it's, it, i'm playing the same character cool. i have uh, my daughter is the same my husband is the same but it's going to be a wild ride it's a it's going to be um I think it's very inclusive and yeah. part in the, with what's going on in the world right now. So it's going to be exciting. It's going to be so exciting. It's definitely going to resonate with a lot of people then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Some are going to like it and some are not. Gonna like it. <laughs> some people might, might hate that they love it. <laughs> that, that's it. You know, but, I, you know, again, it's a story that needs to be told. So. Yeah. So what can you tell us about uh, the upcoming Not a storylines? damn thing. Not a damn I thing. I like I can't no tell problem. you anything. Not <laughs> I always a damn have thing. to ask. I always Not have to ask. Not a damn thing. <laughs> I we love are it. sworn to secrecy. <laughs> no problem. No problem. No, keep the, keep the cards to your chest. That's cool. Keep your secrets. That's cool. <laughs> I love it. It's like that. So, yeah, it's exciting. Love it. Love it. So. You also got to play, uh, you played uh, Roseanne Barr in a uh, movie, a uh, TV movie about that. What was it like getting into that role? Because that had to be fun. I mean, that had to okay. be a blast. <laughs> you know, it was it was a lot of fun. But, you know, the, the, the hardest part for that for me was the fact that do, I didn't want to be a stereotype. Yeah. I, I wanted to tell her story as the writers had written it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I ran into her one time. She said, I like what you did, but you cried too much. You know? So um, she was very kind to me. She was not kind to, to the actress for Fox, on Fox that played her. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I guess Stephen, who played uh, uh, my husband on there, mm -hmm. um, he has since passed away, Stephen Lee. And uh, but he was wonderful. Yeah. So as Tom Arnold. Yeah. 
Love it. That was, yeah, I, I, I always like Tom Arnold. I, I can't, I can't, when I think of Tom Arnold, I can't help but think of true lies. He plays like the best sidekick ever. <laughs> I, I, well, it's true. And if you, uh, the things he's doing right now are very, very much the, a good sidekick and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I, I think Roseanne was a creative genius on the things that she did. And I'm sorry that things have not gone as well as they should have and could have, but sometimes you open your mouth and you shouldn't. <laughs> well, it's, it's, kind of a strange culture thing anymore i mean you know like yeah. if you say the wrong thing it's yeah everybody it, just sort of turns against you they forget like all the stuff you've done or or you know they just find a reason to not like you it, it's so interesting i was watching finding your roots mm-hmm. on pbs and anita hill mm-hmm. is one of the people they're finding her roots and if if she made the claims that she made then today yeah he'd be gone yeah I mean, it's just, we're in a, it's how things are happening. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. How do you feel about that? I mean, as far as like, you know, with the, the way the world is kind of doing that or, or reacting. Well, as a woman uh, of age and stuff, mm-hmm. I, I remember working in the city. I told you I had a job before that and right. I, working in the seventies. I can remember that when you went to work, you must be in a dress. You must have mm-hmm. pantyhose, have a second pair of pantyhose or hose in your drawer so that if you get a run, you can change them. We need you to look this way. I'll look to, it was crazy. And it wasn't until uh, the mid seventies that we were allowed to have pants suits. You, it had to be a pants suit. You couldn't yeah. wear just pants, you know? So there are a lot of things that happen and you could, in the office space, you could see, you know, somebody saying, come to my office and chasing you around the desk and stuff. I mean, you know, so we've come a long way to protect women. Uh, yeah. And I think that's terrific. I agree. Um, but we've all, at the same time, we've all so come a long way to protect men. Mm-hmm. So um, it's when we have inclusivity, I love the fact that we have diversity and inclusivity now mm-hmm. that um, not um, every role has to be white. Not every role right. has to be fully um, uh they can be more diverse. In fact, if they're, if they're disabled, I don't yeah. like to put the disabled because they, they do a lot more things than we can do it sometimes. So. Oh, absolutely. I used to be a caretaker for a kid that had, um, it was muscular dystrophy and autism. And yeah. it's just like, you know, you don't really think about that kind of stuff until you're, until you're in it, you know, like, like around it. And like, you know, just, I mean, people would kind of just like kind of shy away and not really want to, you know, really, you know, interact like they should. It's it's crazy. My stepdad was um, a little person Mm -hmm. um, and he was only four, two, Mm -hmm. um, but he was known as the biggest little man in baseball because he held high position with the Milwaukee Braves, Atlanta Braves, but also started with the Boston Braves. So he was there a long time. Uh, Nick Novicki runs so many great things, right? This way he's a wonderful stand up. He's about, I guess, maybe three, eight, three, Mm -hmm. nine, Um, wonderful stand up father. Um, and also he works a great deal with Easter seals. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend, John Lawson, uh, lost his hands and arms b- b- below the elbows, oh, wow. uh, to an electrical accident years ago, but oh, and he wow. has two hooks and he is an amazing actor and, oh, and sings like an angel. And he's going to be in the new pet cemetery coming out. So. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, so I'm, I, I, I work with so many wonderfully talented persons persons not just on the soaps where they're terrific and um you don't watch it but eric martsoff and um uh, nadia bjorland they mm-hmm. they sing so beautifully yeah. um and they put some of that into the show and stuff so i love the fact that the the writers are are using people to do things like that kevin spiritus who plays my husband mm-hmm. brilliant singer he's he's done so much on the show too was on broadway um he has his own show out that won a lot of emmys called after forever so it's it's um it's kind of like being in an office you, you have people that you work with that are terrific you know? yeah so, and my one of them is martha madison plays bell her mm-hmm. daughter will be the president one day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. It's crazy. I mean, it's wonderful. So I love it. I love it. So you've also done some film work, uh, like some you know more mainstream stuff. I know uh, at uh, one point you were uh, killed in a bank by uh, John Malkovich. <laughs> so how was that? I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, that was a little scary because it was definite violent murder. Yeah. And but John was so wonderful and he made sure that he knew that when he was um, Mary Van Darsdale was the um, mm-hmm. my roommate at the time, she mm-hmm. was the one that got slammed into the wall before yeah. he killed me. So she's dead then I'm dead, but he had to break my neck and he made sure that it was, you know, we're going to do it on one, two, three. Yeah. Not and three, but one, two, 
three. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So there, no one could get hurt and stuff. And I was doing a stage show at the time. And um, uh, one of the one of the girls that was in the show uh, mm-hmm. was a uh, theater student at UCLA. And she said, Patricia, if I don't get to meet John Malkovich, I'll kill you. So, <laughs> Anyway, Did she get asked, to meet him? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I asked if I could have a guest on this thing. And then I asked John, would he talk to her? Because he's a big theater person. And she, yeah. that was, you know, we were in a show at that time. And that was her major. And he spent a couple hours while we were waiting for the setup. Yeah. To, um, to talk to her about theater and how cool. important and stuff like that. He was, he was wonderful. Um, and it was funny, if, interesting because he was friendly and talking. But then when they said, uh, John, we're ready for you on set, he went like, And just got totally into character. Oh, totally went into who he was. I mean, it's just as as another actor watching another actor, he was just. I would say it's got to be like impressive to watch. Anyway, it was. And that I, if I a lot of the kids that I mentor and teach and stuff, I always say to them, you know, listen, pay attention. Yeah. Even yeah. when you're not on camera. So watch, you know, learn, learn everything. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your and be, keep your ear to the ground and, no and be open. You, and no matter what, you be kind, be kind. That's good advice for anything, <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever, jo- whatever job you're in. So yeah. yeah, I love hearing that he's a nice guy. Like I, I love like like when when you got a household name, I love like you know like hearing about how they are in real life. And I'm finding that like I'm hearing a lot of good. Like and that's 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 giving me hope for humanity. To be honest, I mean I've I've worked with some stinkers, and I won't mention sure. names on that part. But sure, because I be, I'm kind, right? <laughs> but uh, you know there are times, and you know what. And even at that point, you don't know what's going on. Right. They're, you know, so again, be kind that maybe they're just having one bad day. If they screw you over two or three times, then you can kind of go. That's a pattern. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's a, and then you're kind of like, Mm-mm, yeah, no, no. Yeah. it's kind of like, who are you talking to? Yeah. You know, not yeah. me, obviously. Right. So uh, anyway, I didn't get to work with Clint Eastwood in that film, but he liked the scene that John and I did in the bank. Mm hmm. So um, he asked me to be in, <clears throat> excuse me, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. So. Nice. So you got to work with him in that. So how was that? That was terrific, too. I mean, yeah. that's great. I've, you know, what I've worked with, uh, I did, um, now my name, I can't think of a name I want to tell you right this <laughs> one. Oh, I like this. Um, uh, Pierce Brosnan. Oh, I love Pierce Brosnan. Brosnan. He was wonderful. Um, uh, that was fun and just a small little part, but fun. And, um, What's his face with the mustaches that now in the new 1887? Uh, Sam Elliott? Yes. Got to work with <laughs> so, I, I mean, The mustache I, made me think. I was like, I, I, I that's all I could think of was I the mustache. Like, I'll be the, and you know, the guy that plays the cop, the mustache. The mustache. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was either uh, going to be Sam Elliott or uh, Tom Selleck. So <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't gotten Tom Selleck yet, but I'm awake on that one. So. Yeah. Well, tell me about Sam Elliott because I love that guy. It was wonderful. I did it. The film was called Hero and mm-hmm. it was a small little part. But again, there are no small little parts because they always lead to something else. Right. But he was kind and gracious. And again, I, it took pick. I always ask if, if, you know, like with those kind, you're kind of like drooling going, I mean, I have a picture with you. Like this. Yeah. And both both of them kindly let me have a photo. With them, so. That's awesome. I totally get that starstruck vibe because like when I was younger, we used to go to concerts all the time. We would always just kind of wait around for the, um, you know, by the bus and just try to meet everybody. And I remember the first couple of times I was so nervous. Like just like, cause I'm just coming out as a fan and like, you know, they're, they're used to it. And then there's just me like, Hey, I'm a big fan. Can I have your autograph? Can I get a picture with you? <laughs> it's like, when I, I think when, I don't know. Do you, are you a country fan? Is that why? No, the, I'm more of a heavy metal fan. If I'm being honest. Metal, huh? <laughs> I, it said it's country something on the thing. And I went, is this, the countries i didn't know what we were doing <laughs> so, yeah i i don't i'm i'm a little old for the heavy metal so. yeah that's okay uh, i grew up uh, on it and i've always yeah. loved it so and it's funny uh sandra bullock was wonderful i got to be directed by sydney poitier oh, which wow. uh, was a tremendous peace. loss by all of us yeah. and uh, or for all of us and um so, I mean, I've really worked with some great people. And again, like I said, most everyone has been kind. There yeah. are that few stinkers, but yeah. But more, it sounds like there's a lot more kind than the stinkers though. I think so. I, I feel it's that way. I think people need to realize that everybody gets up in the morning and puts one leg in one hole yeah. and one leg in the other hole. And we all go to the bathroom. Yep. That's a none fact. Of us, and none of us don't <laughs> go to, 
No. So yes, and when you go there, everyone. <laughs> so when you're starting to feel you're a little too big for your britches, just remember that. Love I mean, it. that's my philosophy. I love it. There's a, there's definitely a chance that at some point I will be feeling like I'm too big for my britches. So don't. <laughs> I will definitely keep that in mind. <laughs> I have a tendency to do that. I will come through here. I will hit Philadelphia <laughs> in the spring, in the spring or the fall. I'm not coming in the winter at all. So, I was and say, I I'm safe for the humidity. moment, but until but once the, the moment, snow is but gone, I'll, I'll keep my eye on you. So. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, not to put you on the spot, but uh, who would you say is your favorite uh, that you've worked with? Huh. And that's kind of hard. I mean, as I said, I've worked with so many wonderful people. It's yeah. really hard. You know, you like working with Jason Patrick, you're going, oh, yeah. I'm working with Jason Patrick. <laughs> like that kind of thing. I'm um, Sandra Bullock. Oh, it's Sandra Bullock over here. Yeah. Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe oh. played the most evil person in, in Speed 2, but such a nice man. I, I mean, love so, it. Yeah. So it's like those things are fun. Um, he plays you know, crazy Clint, very well. Uh, yeah, he does. Um, at one point, um, let's see, uh, who else? Um, I, I can't pick a favorite. I've just been so lucky. Listen, uh, working on uh, Step by Step with Suzanne Summers and yeah. Patrick Duffy. You know, I still talk to some of the kids and them um, uh, as Patrick and I were having cocktails a couple months ago. That's <laughs> so awesome. It's like, so, yeah, I mean, uh, it, I'm just very blessed in what I do and who I get to know and work I love with. it. I love it. And I feel like, uh, cause like you definitely put out a very uh, warm and, and kind vibe yourself. So I feel like that definitely helps with that. Well, I thank you. I, I just, it's easier to be nice and smile than it is to just be a poop. I don't want to be That's a fact. A poop. That's a fact. <laughs> That's, <you> know, so <laughs> Too many people it's, decide to do that. <laughs> it's, it's so much easier to be kind, tell the truth, be kind. Don't, you know, so much easier, yeah. so much easier. Absolutely. So do you prefer film or do you prefer um, like the TV side? What's what? what Cause I, I got to imagine they're both a little bit different. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Cause I, I think I said, I, I get confused as to what I've said when yeah. I'm running my mouth, but we do shoot a movie script today. I right. think I said that. Already. Yes. So that's a lot of memorizing, a lot of hard work in one day. That's mm -hmm. not just me saying the words, that's the wardrobe people, the makeup people, the right. crew trying to keep things, the cameras, the directors, the producers, all of that is a package yeah on a film we may only shoot two pages a day mm -hmm. you know so um memorizing this your muscle your brain is a muscle and i'm using it a lot yeah which is good it's especially at my age it's healthy <laughs> yeah so but uh in a sitcom excuse me that you know it's only about you know 50 pages if that much and right you right. Uh, and the show you shoot on monday is not the show you sh you know you right the, it's not the show you, you finally do on Friday. And sometimes the show, I think we said this when we were talking yeah. earlier, yep. sometimes that show in the. That Just totally the, changes. Totally changes from one show to the second show when they do it on the same day. So it's, um, I love working again. It's not working. So um, I think at my age though, I'd prefer a little sitcom. Yeah. So that I could just sit. Yeah. Maybe I can get this <laughs> done in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> So, love it uh but it, i'm just with and commercials i do commercials i have two mm -hmm. commercials running right now that have been very good um and uh, so I'm, I'm i'm doing it all i'm having fun voiceovers uh you nice know. nice i wouldn't mind doing voiceovers myself i feel like that'd be fun to do it's a real hard thing to break into i mean you just yeah really yeah so uh, i would say you know watch as many cartoons as you can um, mm. Try to get as many voices that you can yeah. and find a good producer that puts your tape together. And then you just start sending it off to people. Mm. And, you know, I might, I might at some point uh, look into doing that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you're a radio guy right now. So to yeah. speak, and even though we're um, on camera at the same time. So, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we'll, listen, if you can dream it, you can have it. Go that's for a it. Fact. Don't, and any, that, and, and don't that's, ever let anybody tell you you can't have your own dreams. Never. And ever. that's how I've like kind of approached this whole like project of doing like podcasting. It's, you know, just like and it's 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 been a real passion project, too. So it's just I've, I've really fallen in love with podcasting. So I definitely. Yeah, I, I there's so that. many of them out there. I mean, and they're there some that are little and, you know, mm -hmm. in, in Philadelphia by yourself. Some are big, enormous things. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know Bob Saget had his own who recently passed away. Yeah, um, uh, there's so many people that have big. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Technology Just, has really allowed like, you know, anybody to like really put something together. 
Well, not anybody. People have to be able to push the right button. <laughs> That's true. I With won't be having a podcast. <laughs> I can't have a podcast unless I have a totally technical, wonderful person. <laughs> right. <laughs> The tech person has to be brilliant. I can't. Mm -mm, no. I listen, my hair would turn gray overnight. So. <laughs> I don't care how much bleach I have. I wouldn't be able to get rid of all of it. It's going to like break through, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. As I'm speaking, it's getting gray. <laughs> <laughs> Just thinking about it. Oh. I love it. So what Thank advice you. would you give to somebody who is looking to break into acting? Like, um, like some, like somebody, I mean, I guess it's, it's probably, it's way different than it was back when, you know, when you first did it, but what, what would you say like is the best advice? You give? Oh, sorry. When uh, dinosaurs ruled the world, it was <laughs> it's a lot easier. Um, it is hard. The most important thing I'd say is get that education. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to go to college to get that education. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to, it's the best place, but um, to be in a good theater department so that you're mm -hmm. working and you learn every aspect of it. You learn how to make your costume as well as build the set. You're going to do yeah. it on. You learn all of that. And, but be involved with a theater group or something that, uh, and act and don't sit in a bar and wine. As I always say, Mm -hmm. Get out there, take classes, work with other working actors and just know that it is the biggest rejection business in the world. I believe it. And don't take and don't take it personally. You just may not be tall enough. You might not be black enough. You might not be white enough. You might not be male enough. You yeah. might not be female. You know, it has a lot of times you would not be in the room for an audition if you weren't talented. The hmm. casting director is not going to put their career on the line if you're lousy. Right. So know Love that it. it's not a personal thing, but there is a lot of rejection. So um, and you may audition for, you know, 40 things before you get one. Yeah. But sometimes so, that one can make all the difference. All the difference. It's a, it's the opening sometimes being in the right place at the right time. So and be nice to everyone along the way, because this actor today could be the producer tomorrow or yeah. the casting person today or the receptionist at the casting office could be mm -hmm. the next casting director. Yeah. Um, so many things that we've done since COVID is all done. The technical person here going, I hate it, it are on zoom. My additions are on zoom yeah. or I have to film them on the iPhone and then, and I have an Android. So I just have to get somebody. To I have an Android it. too. I prefer Android. <laughs> yeah, so I, Oh, we should have a lesson afterwards. Anyway, so I get it. I have to film it on the Android. Then I have to drop it in a casting office place. And yeah, so it's hard. And um, everything is very fast in this business. So mm -hmm. even though I'm, I've got five scripts over there with days that I'm polishing everything up, mm -hmm. I had an 11 page audition yesterday. Yeah. So, so I'm trying to learn that too, on top of everything else. So it's crazy. It sounds crazy. it, but it sounds exciting. I mean, that's it, awesome. It is exciting. And like I said, I never worked. So I love it. I love that's it. Right. That's awesome. So days of our lives fans can expect some really intense stuff coming up with that. Oh, so that's exciting. You betcha. You love it. Betcha. <laughs> I love it. So where can everybody else find you? Um, uh, well, Twitter, I'm okay. um, Patrika Darbo and uh, Instagram. I'm Darbo Patrika. For some reason, I have two Facebook accounts. I don't get the whole thing there, but it's just yeah. Patrika Darbo. No A, no nothing, just Patrick Cadarbo. And I think I have too many fans, so I can't <laughs> I can't accept any new friends right now. So That's a good problem to have. <laughs> please don't take it personally. Please don't take it personally. So, that's a that's a really good problem to have. <laughs> well, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. I so. love it. Well, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, and I wish you the best. This has been this has been phenomenal. Thank you very much, Jade. And I wish you the best. And I hope you don't freeze to death over there in snow I probably country. Will. It's cold as oh God. I put probably your, will. Put on your warmy warms, baby. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much. You have a good thank evening. You. you too, doll. Take care.